Hey, folks, and welcome back to Glenn and Adrian's Rock Talk. That's Adrian. And that's Glenn. And today we're looking at a brand new band for both of us. I have heard of this band. I've heard some of their stuff, but not the song we're going to listen to today, which is supposed to be a departure. Band is Opeth. This song comes off the album Damnation from 2003, and it's called Window Pane. This is a fairly popular song in their catalog. Uh, it's worth noting that Damnation is an album that doesn't really sound like anything that came before it from this band, and it was their seventh album. They are a progressive metal band from Sweden. In frequent cases, you'll hear the lead singer sing in that cookie monster voice, you know. I can't help but bust out laughing when I hear people sing that way. I just can't take it seriously. I don't care what they're singing about. It's just funny to me. You know, it's like, that's Cookie Monster doing metal. But this particular album, they took it down a notch, and it's a little bit more uh, ambient in nature. And my understanding is there's a Mellotron on this track. And it's also the opening track on the album. The album itself gets pretty high reviews, so uh, apparently the experiment worked. In 2014, Team Rock put Damnation on number 91 of their top 100 greatest prog albums of all time. The first Opeth album to abandon metal entirely, Damnation trumped its heavier sibling Deliverance by bringing songwriting to the fore. So, Adrian, do you know anything about this band? No, no, I no. look forward to hearing them. Uh, how do you feel about Swedish progressive metal? Does that sound... It's okay. I mean, I don't know much about it, you know. It's for the Cookie Monster voice. I mean, I, I for a while, I was quite into that, you know, the whole... <laughs> I suppose to an extent I still am, but... Okay, well, fair enough. I just have a hard time. I just start laughing, you know. I <laughs> that. All right, well, but there won't be any Cookie Monster here, so let's go ahead and check it out.
So, Adrian, what did you think? I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I uh, heard some elements of metal in it, but it really struck me more of a as more of a progressive band. Yeah. They sounded a little more like King Crimson to me in, in a lot of spots. What about his guitars? It did, it did kind of evoke memories of King Crimson. So the Korg Triton was what, what the Mellotron was uh, being played through. I mean, it wasn't a Mellotron, it was the Korg Triton. So that's something that came out in 1999, just another uh, workstation synthesizer, kind of related to the M3, which is something I used to gig with uh, back in the 90s, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so this came after. Let's just see what they were talking about here. This blank face in the window pane, made clear in seconds of light, disappears and returns again, counting hours, searching the night. Might be waiting for someone, might be there for us to see, might be in need of talking, might be staring directly at me. Inside plays a lullaby, slurred voice over children cry on the inside. Haunting loneliness in the eye, skin covering a secret scar. His hand is waving a goodbye, there's no response or action returned. There is deep prejudice in me, outshines all reason inside, given dreams all ridden with pain and projected unto the last. Well, it sounds to me like he's kind of almost like he's uh, indoors and looking outdoors and seeing things. It's mysterious. I can't tell if there is a significant message. Uh, there may be. There may be something in particular that happened or what have you. Anybody out there who is an Opeth fan, if you know anything about this song, the meaning or anything like that, please let us know. I'd be interested in hearing more about that. The main guy in this band is named Mikhail Ackerfeld, and uh, he's, he was the guy up there on guitar. He is a collector of obscure 1970s rock and heavy metal albums, which puts, us, puts him right in our wheelhouse. He's been doing it for a while. The first album came out in 1995. It might be interesting to hear some of their other stuff, but I really I have to find something without the Cookie Monster voice because I'll just I, I'll be in stitches. So, given that, if you have any suggestions for us, maybe that'll help us expand our understanding of the band because they sound pretty interesting to me. Then leave them below. Maybe we'll check them out. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you enjoyed our presentation, please subscribe. Okay, thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you on the next one, all right? Take care, folks. See you all later.